Greetings from ICEJA. This is a brief technical assistance recording related to the Community-Based Centers for Trauma Survivors Planning Grant Notice of Funding Opportunity that is currently posted on the ICEJA website. This is a pre-recorded webinar and there won't be an opportunity to ask questions, so please send your questions to the email address that you see on this slide. You can also find this email address on the ICEJA GATA page where this funding opportunity is displayed. This is part of ICEJA's Trauma Center funding that was received in the state fiscal year general revenue fund appropriation uh, to address the development of community-based culturally competent services for trauma survivors. This opportunity uh, is open as of January 27th and the applications are due February 26th uh, with recommendations for funding to be uh, published in March of 2020. This is just for this current fiscal year, so the funding will end June 30th, 2020. Uh, it is the hope that the grant period will start April 13th, uh, but it will, but grant agreements do uh, begin upon execution of individual agreements. This is a brief overview of the program that this NOFO is supporting. So this NOFO is particularly uh, supportive of community-based centers with co-located services designed to meet the diverse needs of trauma survivors, which means that there will be planning to support a center in the community, whichever community that the organization that is proposing this plan uh, works in, to meet the needs of the trauma survivors in that community. The center will have a wide array of services available, which we will get into in just a moment. For the purpose of this funding opportunity, we are defining trauma as lasting adverse effects on an individual's functioning and mental, physical, social, emotional, or spiritual well-being as a result of an event, series of events, or set of circumstances that is experienced by an individual as physically or emotionally harmful or life-threatening. This is a SAMHSA definition. It's a broad definition of trauma, and it expands beyond what ICJA is able to fund with federal funds, which are often limited to funding services directly for victims of crime. For this NOFO, it does not matter what the source of the trauma is, what the event, uh, series event, or set of circumstances, and it can include things like historical traumas, including racism and uh, colonialism. It can include things like poverty, chronic poverty, and also more often uh, associated things like violence and uh, crime victimization. Please see the NOFO for any other details that might be included in this definition. And just another quick note about this NOFO in this recording. Whenever there is a conflict uh, between what is on these slides or mentioned in this recording and the published notice of funding opportunity, the notice of funding opportunity is the controlling document. And that's the source of, of the, uh, the information for this NOFO. And this is just a brief recording to outline some of the, the principles in the NOFO so that uh, applicants might have some insights. Uh, we are talking about the following in terms of eligible applicants. You'll see them on the slide. We are also thinking about underserved communities and what that means. And there are a number of criteria by which a community be, could be considered underserved or in need of or a center that includes co-located services for trauma survivors. Please review the NOFO for uh, the inclusion criteria, ways that communities could identify themselves as underserved. It's also important that applicants, and you see the list of eligible applicants, that they also have community support for their effort and that they're getting letters of support from other organizations. The NOFO outlines several different systems or community interest groups that must be involved in the planning process, and so having at least letters from, that represent four of those different systems or community interest groups is important. It's critical to uh, demonstrating at least a modicum of community support at the beginning of this process. The planning process obviously should include gaining more uh, investment from the community. Some of the systems that are outlined in the NOFO include trauma survivors, victim service organizations, uh, municipal uh, officials, government officials, local government officials, law enforcement community, uh, mental health and physical health providers, and also to consider schools and other health care providers. Of course, eligible organizations, applicants for this NOFO must be registered through the GATA portal. 
So please check that out. It's a, it's a critical step not only to qualify for ICJA funding, but for the funding from uh, several other state agencies. And this is part of our stewardship of state funds and federal funds to ensure that uh, grantees are in compliance with the Grant Accountability and Transparency Act. There are some core elements that must be addressed uh, in the proposed planning process. You'll see them outlined here. It is really critical that these centers include these core elements, and those are played out through some operational requirements that are clearly outlined in the NOFO. Those operational requirements include things like certain hours of operation, certain staffing, considering the site and that it be trauma-informed, that the physical space for the program be trauma-informed, and that the, uh, the policies and practices that the, the work that goes on in the center really meets the needs of the community so that there's ongoing assessment of the community need as well as ongoing assessment of the performance of the center in meeting that need. Uh, one of the things that you'll see in the NOFO is something about meeting the linguistic needs of the community. And so when you think about many communities have diverse linguistic needs, and in those communities you'll want to have center staff uh, and providers that represent the community and would be able to speak to the needs um, of those in the community. The planning process has some important aspects to consider. At the conclusion of this funding period, the planning process should produce a needs and gaps assessment. There should be greater community investment in developing a center, and there should be a concrete plan that identifies the aspects of planning a center, the resources necessary, the, the persons that will be involved or the organizations that will be involved in guiding the center should the community invest in this and identify a plan uh, with the hope that the, the community could have a plan available so that even if this organization that is the, uh, the grantee for this NOFO um, does not want to move forward as the lead, that the community would be able to identify a lead to uh, staff the center and potentially um, write grants for operations and other things in the future. A funded planning process will include all of these folks from the community. Uh, these are key members in considering what the community's needs are and also in eliciting the buy-in of important uh, constituencies to support such a center. Uh, you'll notice that in the application uh, that there is a, an actual application document needs to be completed and then a program narrative. The program narrative functions as the uh, opportunity for the applicant to explain several things, uh, including the need for, the, for this center in the community, uh, the planning process that the applicant would undertake if funded, the vision for the center, and the competencies of the, of the um, applicant in being able to carry out this work, uh, as well as the commitments they're making about outcomes. Just to go back to that previous slide briefly, you'll see the last bullet point says complete timeline of planning activities and goals, objectives, and performance metric sections. Sometimes in program narratives, people will uh, misread the instructions and uh, will not fill out uh, key blanks and tables and other things. And those are, uh, our applications are scored by review teams, as you'll see in a moment. And those uh, are points that are lost then if, if people don't read the directions carefully and fill out all of those sections. There is a budget that will need to be completed as part of the application process. You'll see some tips here on doing that. There's also some more technical assistance on ICJA's YouTube page uh, about completing uh, budgets and uh, also uh, other application forms that you might find in this packet. Here's some of the costs that are allowable for this NOFO, and so these are the things that you'd list in the budget. There is no matching requirement, so you don't need to worry about that in this particular application, but these are the things that will be funded under this grant. And so you'll see here that they're all having to do with a planning process. These are not services at this point for um, survivors of trauma. The idea here is uh, to fund a planning process by which a community would prepare to build a center uh, and build and operate a center in the future. Uh, and that any kind of future funding opportunity, whether it's through ICJA or some other organization, um, a community that is prepared to plan a center uh, would be a, a better applicant for those future opportunities. So all of these costs in this particular application should have to do with the planning process only. As with most awards, no costs incurred before the start date of the grant agreement may be charged to awards resulting from this funding opportunity. I'm sure you'll have additional questions. When you do, you, uh, please email this address established for this particular funding opportunity. Questions will be answered in the order that they're received directly to the uh, inquirer and also publicly posted 
on a, a periodic basis. Uh, the last of the questions will be accepted on February 18th, 2020, and I would predict that by the 20th of February, those answers would be uh, posted so that people making last minute uh, amendments or edits to their application would see those. Uh, here's some information about submitting the application. Everything must be submitted by email. We will not accept uh, submissions any other way. Please uh, review the application criteria and checklists that are in the funding opportunity and follow the directions as carefully as possible. If you have questions about this process, of course, you can also email that address and those will be answered and uh, posted for all to see. Uh, this is a brief overview of our scoring. For this NOFO, uh, applications uh, to be in the running for recommendation for funding would have to score at least 65 points out of 100. And you'll see there that we're going to fund the top scoring application in each of the five regions outlined in the NOFO. And the subsequent recommendations will consider average score, score in the statement uh, of the problem section, so that's a key section in the narrative, and the region in which the proposed program is located um, so that we can uh, appropriately allocate uh, or not over allocate resources to a particular community or looking to fund at most uh, in a community one applicant planning process instead of having competitive ones within the same community. I want to thank you for your attention today. Again, please uh, send any questions that you have uh, to the email address that was identified in these slides. It's also listed in the Notice of Funding Opportunity and I, on ICJA's grants page. We look forward to receiving your applications and best wishes in this process.